often there to feel alone even if we have a family and many friends. And often we are misunderstood and we don't know how to make ourselves in society. This quote to feel alone and we do that loneliness is something to fight at all costs, something that there is wrong. But in the Zen story that we are about to tell you, you will understand that loneliness is not always something native. Indeed, it can become a transformative force that helps us to feel better. But before continuing, if you are not yet among us, subscribe to the channel and activate notifications to be updated when we publish new content for your spiritual growth. The sun rose lazily over the snow-capped mountains, painting the peaks pink and illuminating the small Buddhist temple clean to the rock. Inside, the monk Goro, elderly and wise like a thousand-year-old tree, awaited the dawn sitting in meditation. His disciples gathered around him, eager to hear his teachings. Today, I will talk to you about the art of being alone. Goro began in a calm voice, the sound of his words ringing like a bell in the quiet of the temple. Many fear solitude. They consider it a dark abyss, an enemy from which to escape. But for those who understand it, it is a source of immense wealth, a secret garden in which to cultivate inner peace and true self-knowledge. Kiro told the story of Fugio, a young geisha with a smile as delicate as a cherry blossom. Her life was a whirlwind of colors and music, of sinuous dances and bright clothes. But one day his fate suddenly changed. Her beloved husband, the samurai Aisou, died in battle, leaving her alone like a rose petal fallen by the wind. Fugio sank into excruciating pain. Her world had crumbled leaving her in a desert of solitude. Tears streamed down her face like incessant rain, and her heart tightened in pain that seemed to break her chest. She felt lost and alone, like a boat adrift in a stormy sea. Nothing seemed to make sense to her anymore. One day, driven by an inner strength that she could not ignore, Fujio went to the top of Mount Fuji, Japan's sacred mountain. There, between the snow-capped rocks, and the clear sky, she sat in silence, immersed in the quiet of nature. At first, the silence was deafening, an emptiness that scared her. But over time, he began to listen to the gentle sounds of the wind in the leaves, the birds singing, and the babbling brook. In that solitude, Fugio found inner peace. His thoughts calmed like waves crashing on the shore, and his soul opened like a flower in the summer sun. She rediscovered herself as strong and independent, a woman capable of facing life's challenges with courage and determination. She learned to appreciate the beauty of the world around her, the perfection of a snowflake, the scent of a wild flower, the song of a nightingale. And above all, she learned to listen to her heart, the silent voice that showed her the path to follow. That heart that, until recently, seemed to no longer beat. Solitude is not a void. Goro explained to his disciples in his voice that resonated with the wisdom of the ages. It is a space of freedom, a fertile ground where we can explore our soul and discover our true essence. It is only by knowing ourselves that we can truly connect with others, with an open heart and a free mind. And it is in solitude, the sought after and therefore healthy and liberating one, that we can achieve this. One day, during one of his walks and meditation sessions on Mount Fuji, Fujio met an old Zen master who lived in a stone hut. Goro continued. The master, with his eyes as piercing as the clear sky, invited her to follow him. He taught her the art of meditation, showed her how to cultivate compassion and kindness towards herself and others. Her words were like seeds planted in the fertile soil of Goro's heart seeds that germinated and flourished into a profound wisdom that led her to regain her lost serenity. After many years of learning and inner growth, Fujito decided to return to the world. She was no longer the fragile and insecure young geisha she once was. She was now a strong, knowledgeable woman with a heart full of love and compassion. She was ready to give her wisdom and strength to others. He was no longer a lonely and lost soul but a beacon of light for those who still found themselves in the darkness of solitude. 
Fugio returned to the temple where she had been a geisha and began teaching young women the art of being alone. He showed them how to cultivate inner peace, how to listen to their heart, and how to find strength within themselves. His words were like music to their ears, and his teachings like seeds planted in their hearts. Every woman who came into contact with her developed a sense of extreme gratitude and liberation. While the disciples listened to the story with extreme interest, Goro continued talking about Hannah, a young disciple of Fugio. Hannah had eyes as sad as the autumn sky, added the monk. She was tormented by doubts and fears, and loneliness terrified her. Fugio took her under his wing and taught her to meditate, breathe consciously, and listen to silence. He showed her the beauty of the world around her and made her discover the strength she had within herself. And Hana, over time, blossomed like a flower under the warm sun of Fugio's kindness. His doubts dissolved like morning fog, and his fears turned into courage. She learned to love solitude, to consider it a precious moment to connect with herself and her soul. Fugio and Hannah's story spread across the country, inspiring many people to embrace solitude as a precious gift. And Fugio Temple became a place of refuge for those seeking inner peace and true self-knowledge. In addition to the temple, Fugio created a special place in the forest near the village where a winding path led to a clearing immersed in quiet, where centuries-old trees whispered ancient stories in the wind. Fugio called it the Forest of Whispers, and it was there that he retreated to meditate and listen to the voice of nature and his soul. One day, while walking in the forest, Fugio met an elderly man with a beard as long and white as snow. His eyes radiated a wise light, and his smile was as warm as the autumn sun. The man introduced himself as Hayato, a hermit who had lived alone in the forest for many years. Hayato and Fujio began to converse and soon realized that they had a lot in common. Both had known suffering and loneliness, but both had found inner peace and the strength to live with joy and compassion. Hayato taught Fujio the art of living in harmony with nature, of listening to the singing of birds and the rustling of leaves as if they were words of wisdom. A deep and sincere friendship was born between Fujio and Hayato. They often met in the whispering forest to share their experiences and wisdom. Their conversations were like a balm to the soul, and their friendship a source of comfort and inspiration for both, proving that certain encounters can change people's lives. And that embracing solitude does not at all mean isolating yourself from the world, and not having relationships with anyone. On the contrary, it means discovering yourself and learning to relate healthily to others. Fugio lived a long and happy life dedicated to helping others find inner peace and true happiness, Goro continued. His temple and the Whispering Forest became places of pilgrimage for people from all over the land, seeking his wisdom and guidance. And his story became a hymn to the beauty of solitude an invitation to cultivate inner peace and to give others the light that shines within us. Goro, happy to see the gratitude for these precious words on the faces of his disciples, turned to everyone with a benevolent smile. Learn to be alone, he said. Do not be afraid of silence, because it is only in solitude that you can find true happiness and the strength to build deep and authentic relationships. Solitude is not a condemnation, but a liberation. It is an opportunity to flourish as individuals and to connect with the world with a heart full of love and compassion. I remind you, dear disciples, that loneliness is of two types. The first type is an illness, a prison that suppresses us and isolates us from others. In this case, we must pay attention and recognize this type of loneliness and then react in such a way as not to isolate ourselves from other people. But there is also another type of solitude, a solitude that is good for you, a healthy solitude. This can be a healthy touch for the soul, a true opportunity for reconciliation with oneself. And it is precisely in this type of solitude that we can find inner peace, true peace with ourselves.